When people buy plants, they often ask, what's the best plant for a problem area, such as a wet soil? This is a great question and a really wise way uh, to buy plants, because the best way to have garden success is to select plants that are adapted to the growing conditions of the site. So today I'm gonna to share with you um, some plants, herbaceous perennials, that will grow in those wet sites. But before selecting plants, you might wanna ask yourself, is there anything I can do to alleviate the problem? With wet soils, is it because of a poorly drained soil? Maybe the addition of some organic matter like compost might help alleviate that problem. Uh, is there overspray from a nearby automatic irrigation system that's turned on and left on all summer? If there's overspray, could those heads be redirected so they're not hitting the planting area? Or maybe better yet, maybe the automatic irrigation system could be turned off and only turned on when needed. Is the area a low-lying area that possibly um, you could build up the soil to help alleviate the problem of water pooling there? If the problem of a wet soil cannot be alleviated, here's some good perennials that will tolerate a wet soil. And by a wet soil, I mean an area that stays uniformly or consistently really moist to wet, but no standing water. Now, if water will pool there for 24 to 48 hours every once in a while after a rainfall, the plants I'm going to mention will tolerate those conditions. One of my favorite ones is Joe Pie Weed. It's one of our native plants. It's a very tall plant, grows best in full sun, and pollinators love it. It'll be a buzz with pollinators in that late summer. The blooms are kind of purplish, and depending on the cultivar, it grows three feet to six feet tall. Even though quite tall, Jopai weed will not flop, so it doesn't need to be staked. Coloni, also known as turtle head, is about two feet tall with pink blossoms shaped like turtle heads. It'll spread slowly by rhizomes, but it does so nicely and will not become a nuisance. Coloni prefers soils high in organic matter, though. Swamp milkweed is another pollinator plant, especially for monarch butterflies. It's a native plant and it grows about four to five feet tall and it'll bloom July to August with pink blooms. For an early spring blooming plant that blooms in May when little else is blooming, Siberian iris tolerates very wet soils too. It also tolerates clay soils if that's a problem. Siberian iris can grow about three feet tall and while it has a very short bloom season, the foliage will remain nice all season long which makes a nice backdrop for other flowers. Helenium is a native plant. It's also known as sneezeweed, but don't worry. It is rarely the cause of sneezing. Helenium will grow two to three feet tall, and it typically has yellow flowers from about August to October, but there are orange colored varieties too, as you can see in this picture. Prairie Blazing Star, this is one of our liatris. It has purple flowers, that grow on these tall spikes that attract butterflies as well as a lot of other pollinators. It'll bloom from August into September. Ornamental grasses that tolerate wet soils include our native switchgrass, if there is space for a four by four foot plant in your garden, or Carl Forster feather reed grass. This is kind of a tidy, upright plant that'll green up earlier in spring than most of our ornamental grasses. If you need a shorter grass-like plant, there are many types of carex or ornamental sedges on the market, such as brown fox sedge or tussock sedge. Juncus is another good choice for a wet soil area. These are just some perennials that will do well in a problem area of a wet soil. If you can't correct the problem, be sure to select plants that tolerate those growing conditions. It's the key to success with gardening.